speech about the advent of Europeans in India. Now regarding this topic, it is a very important topic for civil service point of view. Now in this topic, we are going to discuss about various Europeans and the companies that came to India for various purposes. Now we can divide the Europeans that came to India into four categories. Now the Portuguese, the Dutch, the English and the French. Now we are going to discuss about the Portuguese. Now there is an interesting topic about the Portuguese that they are the people that came to India first and left last in 1960 upon Operation Vijay that is undertaken by the Indian government. Now we will discuss why the Europeans came to India. Now in the 15th century there is a massive uprise in the English subcontinent that is in the Europe. There was green revolution which increased the food production. There was increase in the meat production and the lifestyle of the people also increased. This increased increasement happened due to good quality of flow and good quality of seeds that were produced in the green revolution. Now the increased demand of the meat and the production of the meat carried on the call for more spices and luxury items as the lifestyle of the people increased that is it became better so the people demanded for more luxury items. Now the luxury items and the spices were mainly produced in the Indian subcontinent. Now the market of Indian subcontinent were mainly controlled by first were the Arabs, Chinese, African, Egyptian, Indian, etc. Now these are the people who actually controlled the Indian market. Now they had good relations among them and none of them collaborated in any other businesses or gave any other a competition. They carried on their own businesses upon them. Now the Europeans mainly had in mind to occupy the market to get more and more profit and eliminate them. They also had the idea of colonialism that is making the area under them and spreading the role model of Christianity. Now we will not get above the topic, we will directly run up to Portuguese. Now the Portuguese came to India, first who came to India, the first person who discovered the sea route to India was Vasco da Gama, who came to India in May 1498, in which was a sail of less than a little less than 11 months time with three ships set sail from Portuguese, from the Portugal. Now, we can say that the Portuguese arrived in May 1498, which is not the mod modern history but the medieval period. Now, history is a continuous flow. We cannot divide history into phases, but from the, for a better understanding, we have mainly divided history into three types, that is the ancient, the medieval and the modern period. Now, 1498 is a medieval period where we can see the Mughals were still on their way to achieve greatness in India. So, the first, the Europeans came to India in the medieval period, mainly in the rule of Humayun. Now, when they came to India, the India they get favor because the Mughals who were mainly the main power of India did not have any naval power and India was divided into small kingdoms who did not have any naval power of their own time. Now the Portuguese carried cannons in them. Now when there was cry for exploration of India, Pope Nicholas V, Pope Nicholas V, as a Pope, gave a bull to Prince Henry and gave him the opportunity to explore the whole world. Mainly, it was given to explore India. But Henry died in a short period of time, and his dream was never fulfilled. Now. 
the mainly the Europeans had two power at that time. They were the Portuguese and the Spanish. First were the Portuguese and second were the Spanish. Now, the Portuguese and the Spanish were the main power, but they did not do any business in the Asian subcontinent. But there were only two groups who did business in the Asian subcontinent that were Genoa and Venice. I would like everyone to write down these key notes, key points. Now, so Genoa and Venice had ultimately become rich by doing small amount of businesses, businesses in the Asian subcontinent. Now, the Genoa and Venice region people wanted to give Portuguese and the Spanish the seed they had and also the maritime techniques they have so that they could do business with them because the Genoa and the Venice region were not too strong. They were not able to collaborate or compete with these Arabs, Chinese, African people. So they wanted like a symbiotic relationship where both the Spanish and Portuguese power will get favor and they also can get benefits from them. Now, the Ottoman Turks controlled the Constantinople, which was the main point, main point for transport of items. So, when Genoa and Venice offered assistance to the Portuguese and Spanish, they set out for the exploration of the world. Now, in 1494, a treaty was signed between the Portuguese and the Spanish. That is the Treaty of Torcedillas. Now, this treaty said that the Portuguese, Portuguese will explore every area in the east and the Spanish will explore every area in the west. This divided meant, meant so that there will not create any tension among the Portuguese and the Spanish power which were the main at that time. Now the first Portuguese that came to that set out for the exploration for the Indian subcontinent was Bartholomew Diaz. Now Bartholomew Diaz came to explore the Indian subcontinent. He only rounded the Cape of Good Hope, that is the African subcontinent and he left because of a storm. Now he set out in 1487, but Bartholomew Diaz were mainly confident that after covering the Cape of Buddha through a straight path, he would reach India and he was true, but none of them reached India after 10 years of ship that was headed by Vasco da Gama, Vasco da Gama came to India. He was mainly successful because of an Indian Gujarati pilot whose name was Abdul Majid. Now Abdul Majid is the original inhabitant of India. He was a Gujarati pilot. Now Vasco da Gama came to India in the cave, by crossing Cape of Good Hope and through Kolkata port. Kolkata port. Kolkata port. Now he was mainly welcomed by the ruler of Kolkata because the port, the ruler was rich due to the port actions in the Kolkata. But the Arab traders were not happy about it because they did not want their businesses to be exchanged by the Portuguese. Now, Vasco da Gama said, lived in India for about a time period of three months and he left. He carried a cargo with him and mainly made a profit that is 60 times more profit Sixty times more profit than any other merchant. Now, this opened the gates of the European powers to come to India. 
they saw that how rich they could get by exploring the Indian subcontinent. Uh, Skoda Gama gave them an example. Now, after a year, Pedro Alvarez, Alvarez Cabral, Pedro Alvarez Cabral, Cabral wanted to come to India and he reached India in the year 1500. Now, he had done some interactions with the local people and set up a factory at Kolkata. He had set up a factory at Kolkata, but there was a dispute among the local, local people and some Portuguese, which led to a violence, violence exchange of fight between the people where many Portuguese died. But Pedro Alvarez Cabral wanted to take advantage from it. So he stormed the port of Kolkata. He stormed the port of Kolkata, destroyed many ships, take, took many people as prisoners and destroyed many items of the Arab. He also made another factory and he also made collaborations with the rulers of Cochin and Karnov. Rulers of Cochin and Karnano. But after Pedro Alvarez Cabral made profit and left India, and a year later, in 1501, Vasco da Gama again came to India with higher power. After Pedro Alvarez Cabral left India in the 1500 with a ferocious hostility that he caused at Calicut. Now, Calicut is the ancient name of Kolkata, which I was mentioned earlier as Kolkata is the ancient name was Calicut. Now, from the exam point of view, every word will come in the name of Calicut, not Kolkata. Now, when Pedro Alvarez Cabral left India with a ferocious hostility, now again Vasco da Gama returned to India in 1501. Now his main motive was commercial greed as well as ferocious hostility. Now commercial greed and ferocious hostility. Now when Vasco da Gama came, the king of Calicut was Jamorin. Now Jamorin was the king of Calicut. But when he came earlier, in the 1498, Jamorin gave him a warm welcome. But in 1501, Jamorin declined his offer of excluding the Arabs, the Arabs from the trade. When Jamorin excluded, did, did not want to exclude the Arab from the trades, the relation between Vasco da Gama and Jamorin declined. So Vasco da Gama ruptured every ship of the Jamorin as well as the Arabs. Arabs. So the relation between Jamorin and the Arabs declined from time to time. Now it ruptured fully after Vasco da Gama's second visit in the year 1501. Now, Now here comes to the second part of the Portuguese status in India. In 1505, in 1505, the king of Portugal began to appoint governors. Now governors were appointed in the state of India to protect the Portuguese interest. So in 1505, for a three year plan, the first governor was appointed as Francisco de Almeida. Now, Francisco de Almeida is one of the important persons and founder member of the Portuguese movement in India. Now, he was ordered to capture the main business centers of Arabs like Ormuz and Malacca. Now he captured 
these two centers that is the main business center and the Arabs and he also fortified the ongoing factories of the area that is Calicut, Cochin and Kananur. Vasco da Gama had undergone interactions with the king of Cochin and Kananur and helped him which helped him to fortify his factories to establish his factories in Cochin and Kananur. When Francisco de Almedia came, he fortified these areas for Portuguese interest. But now Portugal had three enemies. Now they were first that is Jamorin of Calicut. Mameluke that is the king of Egypt and some original inhabitants of Gujarat So when the commercial interest and the ferocious greed of the Portuguese grew in India, they of course developed enemies whose business had been affected. So after a year, three navies combined to counter the growth and expansion of the Portuguese. They were the Egyptians and the original natives and Gujarat. They were actively supported by the businessmen of Venice. Now, Venice is the state which earlier supported to the Portugal to establish and find a sea route to India. But when the sea route to India was found, their business was affected because Portugal were very powerful. So they could not counter the power of Portugal and they started supporting the original inhabitants of Gujarat and Egypt. Now these two navies combinedly defeated a squadron of Francisco de Almeida in the naval pattern in which the son of Francisco de Almeida was killed in 1507. Now when his son was killed and the Portugal was defeated, he later on avenged his son's death in a year later that is 1508 and where he destroyed, completely destroyed the two navies of Gujarat and Egypt. Now his popular system was Kaktaze system. Kaktaze policy. Now Kaktaze policy. Now Kaktaze policy is translated as blue water policy. Now his main motive was to make Portugal as the king of waters, which he undergoes through the process of Cartagena's policy. Now, we come to the second governor. He is the most important governor from the Portuguese point of view in the Indian subcontinent, who is Alfonso de Albuquerque. Now, Alfonso de Albuquerque came to India as a governor. Now, he is known as the founder member of governor because of his events and the actions undertaken by him. First, he built naval ports in Dew, Red Sea, and Gulf. Now, when he built naval ports in these areas, these were originally controlled by the Arabs and Egyptians. Egyptians. He established checkpoint in those areas so that the ships which were going through these areas had to take permission from the Portuguese navy. Now, the Indian rulers at that time did not have much naval power, naval power like the Portuguese had at that time. Moreover, they had cannons in their ship which was not found in, in any Indian rulers. Now, the Portuguese were very efficient in their naval because they had two decked ships heavily constructed with wood. None of them 
none of the Indian rulers had anything like that. Later on, the Marathas tried to copy it, but they could not succeed because of the organization and the unity shown by the Portuguese rulers. Now, Alfonso de Arbecchio started making negotiations with the ships that came and often collected taxes from them for showing, for taking them roads. Now, he was one of the first rulers, first governors to encourage the original inhabitants to, of Portugal to take Indian wives. Now, when they took Indian wives, they saw India as home unlike Portugal. Now, the original inhabitants of Portugal, when settled in India, they settled as big farmers, businessmen, and they introduced new crops like cashew nut, tobacco, they introduced improved quality of coconut plant which they used to produce oil and coir for the transportation of seeds. Now, Alfonso de Albrecchio settled with the king of Bijapur. Now, it is the very important event in the history where Alfonso de Albrecchio got the city of Goa from the king of Bijapur without any battle. Now, it is the first time after Alexander the Great that any Indian bit of soil is undertaken by a European ruler. Now, after Alfonso de Arbecchio, the third governor was Nino de Chunha. Now, Nino de Chunha came to India in 1529. Now, when he came to India in 1529, he supported the ruler of Gujarat, that is Bahadur Shah. Now, Bahadur Shah has originally had conflict with Humayun, which is the Huma, which is the Mughal ruler, that is the king of Akbar. Now, Bahadur Shah having conflict with Humayun, he started getting support from the Portuguese and promised them to give a base at Dew. Now, the Portuguese wanted a base at Dew because it is a very important port for the transportation of goods and also it can check the movement of ships of Arabs and the Egyptians. But when Humayun discarded from Gujarat, that is he left from Gujarat without attacking Bahadur Shah, the negotiations between Bahadur Shah and the Portuguese began to decline. Bahadur Shah was unable to negotiate because the people of Gujarat, that is the original inhabitants, did not want the Portuguese in their state. So they ha happened to have a fight between the Portuguese and the original inhabitants of Gujarat. Now Bahadur Shah wanted to raise a wall between the Portuguese and his people. Now he, when he wanted to raise a wall between them, the Portuguese were very unhappy with the decision. So they invited Bahadur Shah to their seat in 1900, 1537, where he was assassinated on that seat only. Now, now it is the end of the glorious period of the Portuguese, which where they saw the appointment of three governors. After killing of Bahadur Shah in the seat of Portuguese in 1537, there came a period of decline of the great state of Portuguese. Now, there were many reasons for the decline of Portuguese, but we Indians often tend to disregard the state of Portuguese. But in fact, the Estado Portuguese da India, which is the Portuguese state of India, was a bigger element. In fact, it had many ports under it. Now, the major ports of India were under the Portuguese, like Hubli, Goa, Daman, and Diu, and also Calicut. Now, apart from these major ports, 
which they carry out as for shipping and port purposes and also restoring their naval power. They also had a, co a coastline of 60 kilometers in the state of Gujarat. Now, there were many reasons for the decline of Portuguese. Now, we will come one by one. Now, the Portuguese often appointed a governor in India for the period of three years. It also had a secretary under it. Now, there was a body named as Fraser Dea Agenda. Now, the Fraser Dea Agenda has the work of collecting the revenues and also from the local people and also from the ships and collecting passes from the neighboring ships that pass on this route. Now, the Portuguese, the religious policy. Now, the Portuguese, the Moors, that is the Moors. The Moors are the ordinary inhabitants of Eastern Africa. They are, they are mainly a Muslim community. The Moors were the greater enemies of Portuguese as well as the Arabs. Now, when the Portuguese came to India, at first they started executing the Muslims. Now, they had many reasons for executing the Muslims because the Muslims were the bitter enemies and they were also, the Muslims were also the merchant which gave power to other kings rather than the Portuguese to fight. Now, when they started executing the Muslims, they lose the favor of the Mughals. Now, at first, the Mughals were tolerant against them. Portuguese, in fact, were tolerant to the Hindus in the first. But after a short period of time, they also started executing them. Now, they, the Portuguese were notorious in their behavior. They were also like pirates. They captured other ships. Now, in 1529, about the Portuguese were bitter enemies of Mughals, but in 1579, a letter was forwarded by the Akbar to send to learn men so that he would learn about Christianity. Now, however, the Portuguese, that is, the Christians were intolerant to the Muslims, but Akbar had interest in God. So when he asked for sending two of his learned priests to take, give him knowledge about Christianity, they agreed very, very happily because they thought it is a chance to convert the royal family of Mughals and also their officials to Christianity. Now, in 1578, two of the learned priests named as Rodolfo Aquaviva and Antonio Monserrat, they too reached, reached the state of, that is the capital of Akbar. Now, Akbar occurred three times. Akbar asked for the learned priest three times. From 1579 to 1583. Now again, he called them in 1590 to 1592. And at last, it was in the court of Lahore because it was in 1595 to a period of one year or so. But they, did not, they cannot convert the royal family of Mughals to Christianity. Now, after Akbar, his son Jahangir set aside the throne. Now, Prince Salim, who is also known as Jahangir, also had keen interest in Christianity. But they never took, never took upon Christianity. Now, the priest of Christians, priest often had the individuality or the power to build their churches in the city of Akbar or the Mughals. Now they often understood the people and they wanted to convert the young people to Christianity. Now the Portuguese also had a dirty game of capturing young boys and girls of Hindus and Muslims and taking them as slaves and raising them as Christians. Now, this notoriety not only affected their religion, their relations with the Mughals, but also with the local people. Now, 
The Portuguese had good relations with the Mughals from Akbar's time, that is 1579. But in 1582, Captain Hawkins came to, that is, one of the English ship, Captain Hawkins of England, Great Britain, came to the Mughals, the court of Mughal, with his ship Hector. Now Hawkins had a ship called Hector. Now he fought with a small squadron of Portuguese and came to the court of Prince Salim, that is Jahangir. Now Hawkins fluently knew the Turkish language, so he did not want any interpreter to talk with Prince Salim. Now Jahangir was thoroughly impressed with him, so he appointed him as a Mansabda with 400, 400 soldiers under him and a price of rupees 30,000. But apparently he never got the reward. When Portuguese retaliated, he had to flee to England. But a year after, the sea that is dragon, a big sea that is dragon with a small sea that is Kosiander, came to the court of Jahangir with the command of Captain Besh. Captain Besh. Now they fought, they had fought the entire fleet of Portugal. Now as Jahangir did not have a ship that is a navy, what its time he was thoroughly impressed by the courage and the firepower of the British. So he appointed, appointed them and gave the order of training to them. Now the Portuguese were thoroughly affected. Now the first part they were affected because they were drawn to the wars with England and Holland in 1580 to 1581. They had to fight fight war with England and Holland to support Spain. Now there they had to give up their powers in India. They had to call upon some of their forces from India. And second, their defeat by Captain Best helped the English to carry out firepower and navies in India, which so they had to retaliate. They captured English ships as well as the ships of Mughals. With fed up by the notoriety of the Portuguese, Prince Jahangir, that is the King Jahangir, ordered the prince, ordered the prince to capture Hubli, that was the base point of Portuguese. But it was until Sahajahan, that is Prince Salim's son, son, he ordered cap to capture the Portuguese. Now the Portuguese were captured in 1629. Now the Mughals, Mughals King Jahangir Sahajan ordered the governor of Bengal, that is Kasim Khan. And the governor of Bengal was Kasim Khan. Now he was ordered to capture Hubli from the Portuguese. Now he captured Portugal, the Hubli, in 1629. Now the Portuguese had very less power after the capture. Now the Mughals lost their 1000 men, but they captured 400 of Portuguese. Now these Portuguese were asked whether to convert to Muslims or to be executed by the Mughals. Now after the capture of Hubli, that was the main point, main point for the trading for them and also storing of goods. The, pa the power of Portuguese decreased. There was a time when Portuguese often get into the local politics, that is the fighting between the Marathas and the Mughals or with, with the small states of the northern India and also with the kings of Cochin, Goa, etc. The kings of Vijayanagara, but now they had very less power to attempt to come to the local politics. So they often get into the notorious city that is capturing other ships or becoming as pirates as well as capturing young children to convert them to Christianity. 
so they often had to fight wars with the locals. But it was until 1681. It was until 1681 when the Marathas completely captured the main power of Portugal, that is the land, that is Goa. After three subsequent wars. Now this was the end of the main Portuguese power in India. But the, there is a contrasting character of the Portuguese that they came first to India and left last. However, their power was slowly decreased. They often remained in the neighboring states of Portugal, India, that is Goa. They often captured small, small regions. Now the Portuguese left India in 1961 after Operation Vijay by the Indian government. Now, this is the end of the history of Portuguese. Now, we will come to the next chapter. Thank you.